Good afternoon. Welcome to Sacred Time with your brother Omar A. Muhammad. Yes, you know I like to feed you some good thoughts and words today. Uh, I'm showing you the book, The Words of Martin Luther King Jr. He's a selected uh, with an introduction by Coretta Scott King. So, th this is good. Today is Freestyle Fridays, and I'm out here in my... Uh, in my um, backyard paradise uh, at my koi pond. You see a couple of koi running through there, you'll see them. And uh, this is one of the places I love to retreat to when um, when I come back from a hard day if it works. So, let's get with it. Freestyle Fridays are gonna go like this. Uh, today, <clears throat> today I am uh, meditating on a thought that, that came to me this week, one of the most profound thoughts of fact that came to me came uh, as I was um, closing one of my uh, tutoring sessions for chess tutors. Uh, we had the young people getting together and uh, uh, one of the people who sponsored us and get us out there is uh, um, a, pro uh, a program run by uh, NBA coach and uh, we call him Coach Derek. Coach Derek said to me, uh, when you come to my house, uh, there's a sign in my house that everybody needs to see when they come to my house. And I was like, well, what is that? He said, uh, that sign is, uh, it says this, if you can't see it before you see it, then you will never see it. And I said, what? What is that? What did you say? He said, I said, can you say it again? He said, if you cannot see before you see it, then you will never see it. So I was like, man, what are you talking about? He said, man, what we have to do, we need to visualize. We need to see it before we see it. And I started to think about what he said, and I was like, okay, um, okay, that, that sounds like it's good. I've been studying spiritual principles and trying to understand how um, things work in the spirit, how we manifest uh, in this, this thing called the law of attraction, how do we manifest things. And a lot of times we don't know. Sometimes some of us are struggling with the concept of manifesting. Can we manifest? Can we bring something from the unseen world into the seen world? And uh, I had to point out to a friend of mine recently who said that... Um, she said, you know, my friend, I always say that my friend is um, one of the most blessed people on earth. It seems like God loves her more than me. And I said, oh, yeah, is that right? And she said, yeah. I said, uh, how do you prove that? He said, because um, just recently God did this thing where she got a house and apartment uh, for uh, no cost. She didn't have to pay mm -hmm. anything. Uh, and I always wanted that, but she didn't do that. And I said, well, that does appear that God um, uh, loves, loves her more than you. I said, yes. She said, yes. I said, then you are an excellent manifester. And she was upset with me. What, what do you mean, an excellent manifester? I said, because you had that thought that God loves her more than you. And because you had that thought, God allowed that thought to manifest. Material, it manifests. It, it is true. And, and so I said, you are a powerful manifester. But now let's be more deliberate about what we manifest. Let's think about what we're thinking about before we do it. So when Coach Derek said to me, that we must visualize. He said, if you can't see it before you see it, you will never see it. As a coach, you know, he's coaching the basketball players. In fact, he's a coach in the school, and he's also an NBA referee. That's what he is, a national NBA referee. And so I said, uh, so I said, tell me a little bit more about it. He said, man, look, with these young people, you have to show them a vision. You have to let them see something happen, see some good happening before they can actually see it in their life. He said, you have to visualize. And then I thought back in my mind to something that proves that uh, in ancient scripture. The ancients uh, said something like this, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So for a long time, that thing, uh, um, that statement just, um, <clears throat> It was difficult for me to understand. And then one day I think I have a clearer understanding about it. So, so that if there's something that you really want to see happen in your life, say you want to get married, <clears throat> say you want to start a business or write a book, one of the most important things for you to do before you do that is think about that as, as concretely as you could possibly do. Think about what it would be like to write that book. Think about what that book would look like. Think about what it would be like to be at that wedding. Think about how that marriage would go. Think about what that house is going to be like when you're in that house. And when you're thinking about it, think, of that, think about how you can do your best to get that house, get that, uh, that marriage, get whatever it is that you're thinking about. So visualize it, see it in your mind. And once you see it and lock that in your mind, 
Then you visualize it. You see it. Then you start holding that in your mind. You start getting, what does it feel like to have that? You know, it feels good when, I, when I, all my bills are paid. It feels good when I'm married with my new husband and going on a new way. It feels good when I have that new job. It feels great. And so you start to begin to think. So I had another conversation with a brother who said, you need to think before you feel. And I said, well, proper thinking will affect how you feel. If you're thinking properly about God and yourself, then you're going to feel differently. If you think properly about God, that God created you in his image and his likeness, that God uh, sees you as a blessed child, that God sees you, good to see you, my sister, uh, Felicia, I'm so glad you're here. We're talking about, um, we're talking about Freestyle Friday where um, Brother Derek gave me this, uh, Coach Derek gave me this statement. He said, he said, if you can't see it before you see it, then you will never see it. If you can't see it before you see it, then you'll never see it. And I was working with this thing about how that we need to see, we need to visualize in our mind what it is that we want, whether it's a marriage, hello, hola, como esta? Whether it is a marriage, whether it is a job, whether it's a new career, whether it's a new house, whatever it is, we need to visualize it. And I spoke about uh, one person who, who just, you know, she visualized something negative and she got it. She visualized God loving someone more than her. And guess what? That's exactly what God did. God showed her every way possible that he loves her more than he loved, mm -hmm. uh, loved this other woman more than she loved her. And I had to say to her that she is an excellent visualizer. That she, it would be important for her to begin to visualize something different. Visualize herself being blessed as, any, as much as any other person. Visualize herself in that new house, in that, in that new car, in that new situation, in that new marriage. Begin to see that in your mind's eye because your thinking will determine your feeling. It's very important to understand we are not to deny our feeling. Sometimes we feel good, sometimes we feel bad, but it's important for us to not to deny it, not to suppress it, not to put that feeling down. If you feel good about something, you declare, I feel good about this thing. I feel good. I feel good. I feel like God is about to bless me abundantly. I feel like the breakthrough is coming through. And how do you act when you feel like that, man? You start, hey, I feel good. You might get a smile on your face. You be like, yeah, man, God's about to bless me something good. Oh, it's about to be, oh, it's about to be on and cracking up in here. It's going to be real good. So you begin to think that thought. You begin to feel that thought. And then we begin to make that statement true that we find in the ancient scriptures. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let me let me explain to you that a substance is something. It is something that is, 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 he said. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, this substance that, that this faith is talking about, you cannot see it. It's something that cannot be seen or touched or felt. It is 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 unmaterial right now. But it said that that faith is the substance of things hoped for. So I love that word hope because if you have a hope, that means you have a desire for something good to come. Many of us are struggling and probably drinking it and doing all kind of crazy stuff because we've given up hope. We, we stop believing that the God of all creation will come through for us. We, we, we have the wrong kind of what I call stinking thinking and that stinking thinking gives us depression and all kinds of other feelings that go along with it. So when we are, when we are imagining ourselves, when we are feeling ourselves, thank you very much for sharing, I appreciate that. When we are imagining ourselves and we are feeling ourselves uh, uh, as less than God created us to be, when we are imagining or seeing ourselves uh, as, as, um, as, as not a promised child of God, then we begin to have that kind of bad feelings and it, it just goes all on together. So let, let us make a decision to choose to think the higher thought. We can choose to think that we are less than or not, uh, are not, um, are not approved upon uh, in God's sight, or we can choose to say, I'm a child of God. I'm, I'm created in his image and likeness. God's spirit dwells in me. We can make a choice. And when we make that choice for the higher part, then our feelings will follow that choice. Now, I remember my coach, uh, my coach, I used to um, sing on the Morgan State University Choir, Big Up MSU, is a historically black college in Baltimore, Maryland. And our coach said to us, our, our, our choir director said to us, when you go to those, kind of, <laughs> thank you, change, that's exactly what we need to do. We need to change our mindset, but we can do that. Now, I like that you put that on there, because let me say what my grand, what my father-in-law always says. Whatever you set your mind to do, you can achieve it. Whatever you set your mind to do, you can achieve it. And I thought that was just some hocus-pocus he was saying at, at one time, but now I realize that he was right if you set your mind to do it. For my grandfather, for my father-in-law, my father-in-law set his mind to come out to California to make some money, and when does he make enough money, he's going to go back to uh, Tennessee, buy a house, and take care of his mother. He said, if you set your mind to do what you do, that man did exactly that. He, I said that he left Tennessee a poor black man. 
he came back to Tennessee a wealthy white man. And I say that with tongue in cheek saying that, you know, he's living the life of the white people that were there before he came there. Because he vigilant, he set his mind to buy some property, to do what he needed to do, to work as much as he did. He worked and then he retired. He had a wonderful thing. He blessed everything. And then he packed up his bag. Almost, I was kind of, kind of got, got depressed. As soon as after um, me, and my, me and his daughter got married, not too long after that, he just picked up his uh, truck pack his bag, sell his house, and move to Tennessee. The money he had for his house, he sold for his, uh, has sold his house for it in Los Angeles. He was able to buy a mansion in Tennessee. He set his mind. So I want to encourage us to understand that the things that we want in our life does not come to us just by happenstance. We have to be deliberate about that. And our delib that's right. And our, delib our deliberateness has to be this. We have to say, I will set my mind to do a thing. And whatever we, if we get, if we use the right kind of thinking, we can do that. Now, one thing that I discovered that modern religion has given us is that we have this, um, this fearful, dreaded way about seeing God. We're thinking that God is about to come and jump on us at any moment and catch us unawares and, and take us out. No! God is willing that no, not, not willing that any man should perish. He, God does not want anybody to get lost in this in this transition as we're moving forward. He wants all of us to know we're created in His image and His likeness, and this is how He set it up. He said that you know, uh, He said, "Let the God created things." He said, "Let there be," and it was. So God thought of a thing. I wanted this world. I want to make a world. I want to make a man. I want to make uh, animals and stuff like. That. He had the thought. He spoke that thought, and it came into existence. So everything that we see in this material world, it was in the mind of God. Oh my goodness, can you believe what I'm saying? You and I were in the mind of God before we even got here. So that means that he's not worried about us making mistakes and doing anything like that. We were in his mind. The very fact that we're here, we know that we're in the will, in the mind of God. We live and we move and we have our being in God. So we now we're taking some of these scriptural things and say, wait a minute, it is saying way more than what we used to say. Let's go back to that major, major important one. It says faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now we talked about hope being something that is something desirable. It get, it, it's, it's ahead of us. It gives us a desire to get up and move. If you have hope, you can do something. If you lose hope, then you can, you, you know, you're, you're, you're in a terrible situation. In fact, I believe that if you lose hope so much so, you can actually take your life and, 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 and end up in a suicidal situation or do something destructive with your life. But if you have hope, you get, like, you get up tomorrow and say, man, what me and God going to do tomorrow? Or you might get up this morning. Forget about tomorrow. Let's do it today. We wake up in the morning and Say, what, 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 what can me and God do today? What kind of things are we going to create? What, what things can we, can we come up with? Now, here's the things you want to be coming up with. You want to be thinking in your mind, writing down very concretely what it is that you want to materialize. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So you want to say you have faith? Then dream in your mind. Dream the biggest dream you can think of. Uh, dream in your mind. For right now, I want to see that 10-bedroom house. Excuse me. Um a seven bedroom house with three three or four baths with a garage, a plenty of space and, and, and start seeing that. See yourself in it. What is it gonna be like in you? You're gonna have one of them wonderful chairs. I'm gonna have one of them nice reclining chairs in the house. It's gonna be yes. I hope to see you and okay, good. I hope I'm glad you're seeing that. And you're right. And guess what? You will. Because your hope is, 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 is in God. Your hope is a, a viable hope. We're going to come. We're going to bring light, love, and laughter into that space. And you know we're going to have a good time in the Lord. So you hope to do these things. You hope to bring these things in, 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 into reality. And I hope to invite you into my space and to see what faith can do. When I went over to Crenshaw Christian Center, um, that is a center that was, um, uh, I can't remember the pastor's name, but it's a Crenshaw Christian Center. It is a big dome center. When I went in there, I went and touched the wall. I said, this man's faith, he saw in his mind that he was going to buy the, uh, a dome and have a place where all these people were going to come and listen to his mind. He saw that in his mind. And guess what? He added, actually had it come into being because he held it in his mind. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So listen, get your hopes, line up, see what you really hope for, and then hold that. That's that substance, the things hoped for, the evidence. And so people say, you, you're not going to have that. Yeah, I am. Because I believe in my heart God is going to bless us abundantly. I believe in our heart we're going to be able to travel uh, at, at our, at, our um, with, at just a desire. We desire to go there. We're going to get on any plane we want to get on, first class or even charter plane. Because God wants to do that. He wants to bless us. And he wants us to help other people come to the understanding and awareness. Like you, Sir Felicia, do you know that God is using you mightily as a major networker, a sharer of truth? You, God is just a uniquely a positioned you to be a great influencer. And by doing that, do you think that God is not going to forget you in the blessing process? No. God's going to bless you even more because he knows if he can get it to you, he can get it through you. 
So this is a wonderful place to be. I want us to begin to think about this as Freestyle Friday. Remember, we got here by Coach uh, Daryl's statement. He said, if you, can, if, you, if you can see it, you must see it before you see it or you will never see it. You must see it before you see it or you will never see it. So you begin to see it in your mind. Picture it. Give it detail. What does it look like? What is that? Well, you know, my house got a, a beautiful um, natural tones. It's got a wonderful backyard with wonderful landscaping. I mean, you have to see that thing and uh, identify it and understand it. So when it comes your way, you say, ah, oh, that's it. That's it. I got it. I know exactly what it is. And so so you can eliminate all that other stuff. If you run around looking at some of your, your lowest dreams, then you're like, man, that's not really it. You don't even have to waste your time on trying to go for that because you already know in your mind the vision that you have in your mind. If it doesn't agree with that vision, keep it moving until you get to that place where you are living that vision as God said it. Because, see, faith is the substance of things hoped for. That's how we have faith. We have faith in God that we are co-laborers with Him. And, that, and that, as that co-laborer, just as He spoke those things into existence, He saw us in His mind's eye before we came here and He spoke us into existence, we are speaking into existence. You have all that you need. You live in an absolute abundance. Everything you need is coming to you right now. God's favor and blessings upon your life. You are anointed and appointed child of the Most High God. There is nothing that you cannot accomplish. He said, what up, up, you mighty people. You can accomplish what you will. God is with you. And because he's with you, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He wants you to be successful because if you're successful, you'll be one of his calling cards. He'll say, there's one of mine. He's, 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 not, he's not just going to church for a religious purpose. That person is not going to the mosque or the temple or the synagogue just for a religious purpose. That person has an interactive relationship with me. And when you see him, you see what God looks like. <laughs> Walking in the modern times. You see what Jesus Christ would look like if he were here today. Yeah, I said it. So let's be like an elder brother. Let's walk in faith. Let's bring some things into material, uh, into reality. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you cannot see it before you see it, then you'll never see it. Spend some time seeing it. Make sure that you check your thinking because your thinking will determine your feeling and your feelings will determine what you manifest. God bless you. This is your friend, Brother Omar. Yes, walk in faith. This is your friend, Brother Omar. I am your proactive agent of change who communicates so that others might be healed, liberated, and appreciated. I hope you feel appreciated today. You are a child of God. I hope you feel liberated today to visualize and dream big. Take off the take the limits off your dream. I hope you feel uh, liberated and free today. For this is the day, got it? This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So I gotta set my I gotta set my icon. So I'm gonna flip the screen. You're gonna see my pond. Uh, and if you want to contact me on any of the social media, find me there. If you want to see my artistic side? I'm on Instagram at Yahsoul. That's Y A H S O U L. That's my Instagram account. If you want to see me in my uh, my more pastoral professional role, go find me at Omar A Muhammad, comma T H dot M. That's my uh, um, public figure page. If you just want to see what my family life is like, look up Omar A Muhammad. You can find me in a family life. You can always find all my archives on Periscope. You can now find them because they automatically uh, line up there. You can also share them with your friends. And I appreciate it if you would do that. And you can also look up some of um, my old video footages on YouTube. Uh, I think it's uh, just Omar A. Muhammad. Find that out and you'll find it. Listen, I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. All right, God bless you. Let's go on and do what God has called us to do. Let's visualize. All right, I'm going to set this thing. God bless you. Bye-bye. Yes, in the very near future. God bless you, my sister. Here's the pond, you see the fish, and we're out. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you for all that love. Totally appreciate it. Peace and blessings. Now the machine does not want to let me out, but you can enjoy uh, the, the nice sounds of water and the fish until we figure out what we need to do to be released from this broadcast. Uh, thank you.